Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this video, I'm going to talk about lighting improvement and look development. I want to add in the candle fire in the scene to match the reference. First create a cube and smooth it once. Snap it to the candle. Select the sphere and go to Phoenix FD and click candle simulation. Then select the candle itself, go to attribute, Phoenix FD and node properties. Now I added a new tab, expand it and uncheck solid. Select the candle string and do the same. This is to prevent these meshes from interfering with the fire that we are simulating. Now we can hit play button in the Phoenix FD tab. Once the fire shows up, we can hit pause. And let's trigger IPR to preview our scene. Now we can see the fire but it's not emitting as much as we want it. Select the simulator and go down to the fire tab. Raise the fire multiplier so that it will be brighter. I set it to a thousand and it looks better already. Now select the simulator and check the output. You can see the output directory. Go to your file explorer and head to the folder. Since we paused at frame 16, we should copy the file 0016 only and paste it right one step back into the data folder, then name it candle light backup. Now go back to Maya and hide the simulator and the mesh. Go under V-Ray tab and create volume grid. Under preview and render path, load in the backup AUR file, then enable GPU preview. Hit render again. Now I'm further tweaking the fire multiplier. We can now delete the simulator, source, and the spear mesh. Now the background looks silly. We are going to fix that. To speed things up, I'm duplicating the mattress geometry to the background and delete all four sides. Leave only the flat plane. Position it right and hit render again. Now it looks a little bright and flat, so I'm creating a black box to block and consume some light. Render again. It is way too dark so we are making the walls slightly brighter rather than just pure black. It looks better now. But I still want to add another wall behind the camera and ceiling so that we can have a sharp direction of where is the light coming in, which is only from the right side. You can see the image instantly become so much darker, even though these geometries are not visible to the camera. This is very important part of lighting. We are compositing the light. In most cases for beginner like my student, they apply one HDRI lighting and ends there. This is not a big problem, but it means you leave your hands off the control to the HDRI texture. Even if you can get a nice result from it, mostly came from Lucky. Now we are changing the color of the wall and ceiling to make it brighter. Go to camera setting and apply a little winnet effect to the render. It helps to focus to the center. I'm changing the blade to 9. In fact, this value I use in camera settings are based on real world vintage Metacon lens. I own one of these lens and I want to mimic the same result from it. I then tweak around the shader like the SSS, scale of the candle, leaves, waffle, and tweak the lighting intensity a little bit here and there. Let's do a render and see how it looks. From here onwards, we are starting to improve each thing in the scene. This is my favorite part, look development. What I do in this stage is to finalize everything, add in as many details as possible, tweaking back and forward between textures, small particles, geometry, or even redo some parts. The very first thing that annoys me was the sweater. It looks uglier every time I look at it. Go back to Maulus Designer and re-simulate it. I keep repositioning it again and again and again. As you can see in the video, I keep exporting and importing to Maya to see the result. If it looks bad, I delete it and repeatedly simulate and re-import. I have spent about an hour just to place it the way I want, back and forward. Next up the water. It looks boring and little too less. So what I thought here is that we can redo the model and raise the water level and probably add some cute little bubbles around the surface. 
First, we remake the model. Then create another geometry and reverse its face and apply same water shader to them. Then put it in the water mesh like I did in the video. One thing here, you must put it in the water mesh or else it won't work. Now we can see that bubble, let's continue to add smaller bubble around it. Then I add a little fog color to the water shader so that we can make the water look a little turbid. Then duplicate some leaves into the water, some drown and some floats on the surface. And let's do the render again. We can see how much we have changed from the last tutorial's result. Now the bubble on the coffee seems to be too flat. I decide to deform the edges a little, making them look much more natural. Then we'll reposition the waffle a bit, and also increase the size of the fork, and then trigger the render. It keeps looking better each time we make an improvement. Now hide the object on the wooden plate because it slows down our render. Select the cloth, assign re refer. Instantly we can see now there's a lot of curves on it. We can go into the property and tweak those parameters to shorten it, decreasing number of fur, making it thinner, and also applying some taper. Trigger render and it looks like spikes now. Let's further tweak the parameters to make it look more like fur. We decrease the thickness length and add some bending, also add more variance to randomize them. Then select the fur and apply new V-Ray material. The key here is to reduce the opacity. Now the fur looks a little transparent and better from the camera view. We are going to add fur for the blanket as well. Same way. Playing with the parameters, reduce length and thickness and that's it. Now I'm adding few curves here and there to simulate female long hair. Very much like how we used to create the wire for mini bulbs, but this time a lot thinner. Details like this can often convince people that this is a real photo. If everything is clean, then it will look suspicious. In the early stage, I was once worried if the waffle looks too repetitive, and finally I couldn't stand it. Instead of making more variations, I can try to add some honeycomb type of liquid on top of it, so that it enriched the entire plate. First, I duplicate the entire plate object that could possibly react with the liquid, and hide everything else. Then create a sphere and animate a path to simulate how the liquid will be poured.
Then select the sphere and apply a honeycomb simulation presets in Phoenix FD. Go to the grid and adjust the size. Make sure it covers the entire plate area. Then decrease the resolution a couple times. In my case, somewhere around 700k cells should be good enough. Then change container walls to open for X, Y, and Z. In the liquid settings, set default viscosity to 0.32 and step per frame to 1. Then select the source. We are going to animate the discharge. I set it to 0.65 all the way to frame 600. Now go back to the first frame and hit play button in Phoenix FD tab. Under the simulator, check show mesh to see the water geometry. It looks smooth, but sometimes it emits too much. This is too sweet for human being. So we are going to further edit the discharge animation. When it transits to another waffle, we can set emit to zero between them. And let's see how it looks now. Now I'm happy with it, so I'm going to back up this frame like how we used to do for the candle fire. I'm copying frame 740 and paste with the candle fire. Name it liquid backup. Now hide all the simulation related object and create a V-Ray volume grade. Import our backup frames. Again, it looks weird. We are going to check show mesh, then go to rendering, set render mode to mesh, surface channel to liquid or temperature, ISO surface level to 0.5 and go under mesh, set mesh smoothness to fall. Now we are going to match the imported grid to the simulation grid. We can unhide everything and render again. It is showing white color now because there's no shader applied yet. Now if you go to Hypershade, you will find one honeycomb shader that is created by Phoenix FD when you apply the preset. We are going to apply that to the new imported liquid and rename it to Honey Shader. Then hit render again. It looks too yellow to me. Go to its shader and turn fog color to white and change refraction color instead. Now I'm happy with the color. Now I'm creating fragments from the waffle. Simply create some small mesh and place it on the plate. Make a few sizes and duplicate them. Trigger the render. May not be very visible to the camera, but just leave it be. I can still see them. And now we are adding autumn leaves. I got these textures from website Gumroad. This guy is providing a massive free scan of leaves which can be very useful. It is free for personal and commercial use. In Photoshop, I'm cropping out one of the leaves to a square shape. Here we have the opacity, bump and color. That's all we need. Save them into our source images folder and back to Maya. In Maya, create a plane and apply a new V-Ray material. Simply import all three textures into the slot accordingly. Then go to Hypershade, then be sure to connect the opacity map to the reflection color as well. Now we can hide everything and do a quick render to see how this leaves looks like. It looks good, but I want to change the color. Go into the color map and change the color again, and also changing the color offsets to brown. And now we are placing it right on top of our book and deforming it a little bit. I'm taking the bump map and the color so that it looks better. Now duplicate another one to place on top of it, so there will be two leaves in there. Three tips here. Turning off effect shadows in the glass shader can make it look even more realistic. It will create beautiful caustic around the area but also take more time to render. Last, adding some tiny fur to the book, exactly like how we did for the cloth.
Very final tips here before we end the tutorial. Take your rendered image to Photoshop and save it as JPEG. When this pops up, set the quality to 5 to 6. This is going to compress your image and give you bad pixels, but that's what we wanted. Too perfect always look fake. And, and then we are going to take this 8-bit JPEG to apply color filters on any platform. Photoshop, Lightroom, or even your phone Instagram filter. Having some color artifacts is even more believable. Because every photo in the world is not necessary and must be taken with raw format. For the last time, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and goodbye.